Welcome to episode 183 of Kapowcast. Hell yeah. Slated that bitch. <laughs> uh, I am Mike. Joining me today is Jeff Jefferson. Hello, everyone. And please welcome back Tony Van. Hey. hey. Wait, was I not on the last one? No, you weren't. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Time is just fucking morphing itself. It's an illusion. <laughs> I can't even Time remember. Time is an illusion that we later submit into death. <laughs> I like that. Yep. Well, I don't know what to do with my drinks. I grabbed an anticipatory drink. Listen, just pop them both and Steve Austin it. Great idea. <laughs> take a take a little step away from the laptop. Yeah. Just stand on the stairs. And the microphone. As well, away from everything. Uh, today we are going to discuss Batman Last Night on Earth, book two. A book I've been anticipating to do, but I've been waiting till we have the trifecta all here yes. before we actually did it. The skies turned purple and so we came. Yeah, I was just, <laughs> it was weird. I don't want to say the past few episodes we've done have been filler because <laughs> we're not about that here. We're all, all about thriller. All <laughs> thrilling quality content. All, all filler, thr- no, uh, all, all thriller, killer. no filler. Oh, yeah. yeah. McGiller Gorilla. But, uh, <laughs> so we're going to do that. I'm very excited to talk about it. was very happy to read it. Uh, but first we have some news. First up, you like that? I did. Very enthusiastic. <laughs> uh, first up, a follow up from one of our stories last week that we talked about. I think we talked about it last week. I'm certain. Maybe that we, we talked did. about it the week before. Uh, either way, we talked about it at one point. The the Tim Drake thing. Mm-hmm. He got a new costume. Yeah, and a new alias. And this week in Young <laughs> Justice, it was finally revealed what his new alias. Do you know what it is? Um, I think I do. What is it? Um. Well, I gotta paint a picture. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, in I guess in the book he's fighting another version of himself from Earth. Whatever is it? Is it's it the e- Nazi one? Or? I don't know. It's an evil version of him. Okay, that's all you need to know. It's an evil version of him, and they're going back and forth. And he kind of the evil one kind of rips on him for still going by Red Robin. Yeah, still and has still having the the costume and the colors and um and he's like, whoa, it sounds so bad. Like when I'm saying it, but he's basically like, oh, well, what do you call yourself? And he's just like Drake. It's the most dangerous bird there is. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it, is liter- that that part is literally a line yeah, of dialogue. It sounds like something from like some Sonic the Hedgehog uh, <laughs> fan fiction so, or something. Basically, like he has kind of a light ball go off, and then they fight and whatever. And then uh, he talks to I forget who it was Kid Flash or something like that, and it's basically like Kid Flash is like I can't believe you haven't gone by that. It's just been right there for the taking. <laughs> so basically, he's going by Drake now. Yeah, that's, it's well, just, I mean, so just I, Drake. I, I did know what okay. it was. Is his like secret ed- identity public? No. Isn't that like extremely stupid? Yes. <laughs> well, no, everybody's just going to think it's the uh, number one billboard, billboard charting uh, <laughs> pop artist. Beetle Drake bashing. Slash meme creator. <laughs> but I was just kind of like, uh, I was like, really? Like, there's, I feel like there's Is, so many better names. Yeah. It's a stupid like, choice. I'm not going to, I'm not going to even sugarcoat it. I think it's stupid. <laughs> I think it's utterly dumb. Yeah, that's pretty bad. What's the costume look like? It's Garbage. Brown, like brown and gold. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of poopy. Autumn. Is, it's autumn colors, just it in is. time. <laughs> is, uh, is Drake actually the most? Uh, uh, is, I thought a Drake was a dragon. I don't. This I, sounds like some John Peters shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know who John Peters is, uh, he was the mastermind that would, would be the would be mastermind producer behind uh, Death of Superman, the Kevin Smith Tim Burton thing, and he also had a lot to do with Wild Wild West and the fucking yeah. Thanagarian Snare Beast. The thing, yep, the thing. Yeah, watch an evening out with Kevin Smith. He has a great story about that guy. Or just while w- watch or Wild, 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 Wild West. West. Or not. Or don't. I don't recommend it. But I do recommend you wear the $2 spectacle sunglasses that you could get at Burger King. Drink drink a full six pack, then watch Wild Wild West. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I feel like they've tried this before with, with heroes. Like, remember they tried... To, uh, like getting rid of the Nightwing alias and yeah. just going by Grayson, yeah. like a secret agent, and people were like, "That's stupid." Yeah. See, that's my that was my exact thoughts on that too. I was like, "That's stupid. That's dumb." And it kind but of, on the other hand, there was a catalyst for that change. You know, and we talk a lot. Well, we have talked a lot about Tim Drake always kind of being the forgotten son. Yeah, yep. And could that be because he hasn't fully created an identity for himself? You know, Dick went on to become Nightwing. Nightwing. Uh, Jason was is now Red Hood. Damien is Robin, and so he was kind of walking around with Red Robin. Right. Though it, that was not bad enough that he kept the Robin name. They decided to put him back in the fucking Robin costume, pretty much. Yeah, that's a good, it's a delicious name, but still. <laughs> so I mean, maybe this could be good. Maybe it will. I mean, I don't know. I'm like, I think the name could have been better. It's off. It's, it's off. Stick. It's off to a like a bad start. Kind of a you know, kind of a stumble on your first five feet of running when you're in a race basically so yeah. i feel they're like they're gonna have to really a lot of better names i could have picked yeah i mean like they 
you're I, I think you have a good point in the fact that he has never really come into his own uh like nightwing or red hood have i think they should have done what they did with red hood and have him be the new face of a classic name or mantle like they did with red hood because it worked really well with him see i think i think the opposite i think they should have did something a little bit more like nightwing and yeah. kind of brought him entirely into, new yeah and brought brought him into his own thing with a, well kind of like what they're doing but with a better name yeah and a better costume i think the costume and a better a reason bit. for it and a better yeah yeah it's exactly. like just like everything what they did except for better yeah <laughs> you, you you had good intentions but your execution was terrible yeah i'm questioning the logic that was done in this writing first of all the world's most dangerous bird is actually a cassowaries cassowary yeah <laughs> god you have so much <laughs> weird shit in your brain man it kind of it kind of looks like a turkey with a mohawk yeah it's it's it like dangerous it's like a jurassic park ostrich yeah they're about five feet tall and they have velociraptor claws and they cause a lot of uh, deaths in uh, new zealand so i was kind of curious i was like Blows what does <laughs> what does this drake bird look like uh-huh. i thought a drake was a dragon um it, it pulled up a duck like your your common okay. See, I thought that common <laughs> normal run of the mill fucking duck. I believe that's a mallard. You yeah. could be right. A Drake you know what? I'm not going to build duck that, that was, lives that near bodies of water. <laughs> I'm not going to even question anything that Jeff says Thanks. when it comes to that stuff because I don't so, know Dick. The day I do, I'll be like, no, that is wrong, Jeff. I had yeah. to. I mean, maybe one of our our more esteemed listeners can let me in, but. Something here is not adding up. Was it intended as a joke? Like the 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 maybe third? he just tricked him into calling himself like now he's like he <laughs> fucking called himself by a duck. He just punked him so hard. <laughs> I mean, uh, the third uh, result when I did a image or did a Google search for Drake Bird was dangerous. Drake Bird dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> And like, just, so apparently a lot of people have been searching yeah. to see if this is true. What's the most dangerous bird? What'd you say it was? Cassowary. Maybe you should have went by Cassowary. That would have been cool. Cassowaries are sweet. That has more of like a villain feel to it though. The well, name. yeah. That's what uh it was that bird that nearly killed Batman when uh in the animated series. Oh, the one that's, that's that uh scratched him. Yeah. He was fighting Penguin. That was a cassowary. And oh. almost caught, almost got him though. Mm-hmm. Best Batman episodes ever. That I was was to, is really that, is that the one where he falls in the kid's basement? The, the no, kid? no okay. that was a good one too. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. Uh, Maybe I think I think it captures the the whole uh what every child would dream about. Yeah. Mm. Being the oh, Batman in my basement. basement. <laughs> <laughs> Get the cattle prod. <laughs> Next up, um, well, I was going to talk about uh, Joker, not mm-hmm. the character of the movie. It's uh, we maybe, already talked about this earlier today. We did, we did. <laughs> and I figure, you know what? Let's get it on record. <laughs> um, no, uh, so uh, what the fuck's the director's name? I don't know. I forget. Uh, RT farty boo boo bear. So <laughs> he was in an interview recently and was talking about how basically Joaquin Phoenix uh, really wasn't a fan of them bringing Thomas Wayne in or basically really any doing any kind of connection to the comics in general. And he was like, I think he would have been, you know, would have preferred if the movie was just called Arthur. <laughs> and that like kind of almost. Didn't they already make a movie called Arthur? That was a TV show about a squirrel boy. That was slightly. <laughs> and he was an aardvark. <laughs> okay. that what he, he looked nothing like an aardvark. He did look. If, if you want, read the books, the first one, he looks like an aardvark and he looks less and less and less. And now he looks like some sort of weird bear. I was yeah. saying, he probably looked too frightening looking like an he aardvark. He does kind of look like a squirrel. Um, he's got those little ears. Yep. Uh, but uh, he said, you know, and that, that kind of confirmed everything I'd already suspected about this movie, mm-hmm. which is, and I, I had mentioned it earlier, like you said, it's a art film disguising itself as a comic book movie. Now people might be like, "Oh, well, you're saying comic movies can't be art." I'm like, no, they can. But There's this is this is an art film is its own genre. Yeah, this is taking a established character and they're just slapping the name on it to, I think, sell tickets to what normally would be your run of the mill, under the radar, artsy Oscar contender, Oscar contender yeah. film. Um, in other words, if this was any Fuck other it. company, it would have been <laughs> copyright infringement. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been vanilla ice all over again. No, 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 it's, well, no, it's not means- Joker because this is Joker. Ours is a little different. Look at it this way. <clears throat> Let's say they went the route and they called it Arthur and it was just about a basically British alcoholic. What it man. is now, <laughs> what it is now, which is a guy that was Elfie. <laughs> no, that was Arthur. What do you think? Elfie? What's Elfie? It was another movie. Uh, <laughs> there, were, But imagine like they, they make the movie. It's coming out. It's called Arthur. It's just about a guy who goes crazy and maybe he does put on some kind of clown makeup. Not necessarily the exact kind of suit. And then somebody reads the script and they're like, you know what? We change a couple. Just make a fucking Joker. Yeah. Slap the Joker name on it. We can, you know, do this, that. Get that, uh, 
Get the not dead Phoenix kid. Joaquin. <laughs> Ouch. Too soon. Is it? No. Yeah. I don't care. Um, and I don't know. Like, I just. You sound I, like you're not excited for this film. I'm very cautious. Yeah. I was about to say, I'm, I was excited and then I was wishy-washy because I, I got excited when all the good reviews started coming out. I'm like, oh, maybe this won't be so bad. And then I was like, I, I was like, wait, the other foot's going to drop. Like, it's too good. There's no mm-hmm. way that like it's some amazing like almost I, I you know I hate to compare it like this but nothing you know like another dark night. People are saying that Joaquin Phoenix could get an Oscar for it. They're saying like his performance is just maybe that's transcending. Ooh, maybe that's the whole uh the whole the whole thing that we're looking at is that they did disguise it as an Oscar worthy thing so that they could get the Oscar to say, "Ooh, we have a comic book movie that won an Oscar. We're not so bad." Yeah. Well, and then I'm going to come up and be like, "The Oscars are rigged. It doesn't fucking matter." Well, I mean, once again, I think the Oscars are kind of like, I think they're kind of like Rotten Tomatoes, where if you can use it to support your argument, you'll grab it. Yeah. Okay. And if you, if it's not going the way to support your argument, you can easily be like, oh, that doesn't fucking matter. Did they paid them off? <laughs> yeah. Marvel oh, pays off Rotten Tomatoes to oh, get good reviews. Or to Disney. <laughs> what people don't know is Disney owns Rotten Tomatoes. They do. <laughs> so they don't have to pay anybody. Yeah, they don't have to pay nobody. <laughs> you know, you, you should have seen it earlier, though. Like, it was really funny when I just kind of, because somebody has said, like, I've never seen a DC movie get a good review on Rotten Tomatoes. And I was like, are you a lot? Are you? Fucking, oh, yeah. Are you you showed like, me? yeah, like Wonder Woman, for instance. Wonder Woman, Shazam, The all, Dark Knight. All the ones that actually people thought were good. Yeah. Surprisingly. Uh, I almost went to Aquaman, but I'd realized that then that had like a 67%. It does. It does. <laughs> it did. <laughs> that's how. Does it? That's how blown away I was. People <laughs> love that one, man. Yeah. Like people were up in arms about. Well, that the, one. I'm sure the audience score is something entirely different. But well, okay, I usually go by audience yeah. score. Yeah. Well, like I said, it all depends. Well, not for you, but for a lot of people, it all depends on what what suits your argument. supports your argument. <laughs> you know, like. Um, you know, I can sit here and be like, well, the MCU is, oh, oh their films are above seventy <laughs> percent or something stupid like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your, where's your DC shit? I, I kind of felt weird being that person that was like, I kind of was trying to rain on people's parade. Yeah. Were you in a bad mood? No. Well, no. maybe I was, I did just wake up. I was at work, <laughs> but I was like, I saw the Joker reviews and I was like, I'm going to post this in this Batman group. <laughs> I saw the reviews start to, the Rotten Tomato score start to drop, which I didn't know was dropping. Cause like people were going crazy. Cause it was like a 90 something percent. Yeah. It was high and it's dropped all the way down to a 78%. Um, which still isn't bad. It still isn't bad. No, and no. I was just all, all I did as I posted it, and all I did I posted it, and then I, I just put the catch like, oh, oh, I had no idea it had already dropped so much. Very, you know, very neutral. Very neutral. Then you have people go, well, curse it, drop. It's on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not a Marvel film, but it's not open to audience <laughs> um, scores yet. Yeah, like this is all review scores. Yeah, reviewer scores. So, and like says, that's kind of uh, asinine to say. I said something to somebody else because somebody else commented saying something. I was like. Well, I just I, I did find it kind of funny that when it was getting positive reviews, everybody was like posting the reviews in here like, yeah, look at all this. But when it starts to change your narrative, then it's a oh, fuck Rotten Tomatoes. Fuck the critics. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I said, it's it's that whole denial thing. Yeah. I'm still have plans to see it. Um, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll leave and I'll be blown away. But I've, I've heard a uh, spoiler alert that he doesn't become Joker until like the last like no last act of the movie. Yeah, so I have a feeling this might be, uh, I don't know, something that I'm not into. I mean, like, I say no, but I feel like it could be good for that reason at the same time. Because I don't know how many times I've said it, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much full to my gills of the Joker. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it's one of it. It's one of the most overused properties DC has. Even, yes. even in comparison to his other half, Batman. Like, I think the Joker is more overused than Batman is. Well, I mean, he's the first. I mean, I guess if you count Venom. He's the second villain to get uh, his own movie. That's true. Good yeah. for him. Good for him. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, I'm excited for it. I mean, it looks like a bizarre movie. I love weird movies. If it's not boring, I don't have any real emotional investment in the Joker character. He's already been done to death, like you said. So if they did try to do something weird and wacky with him, I'm not going to be like, oh no, they ruined everyone's perception of the Joker. It'll just end up... Uh, in another pile next to Jared Leto's. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, you know, I mean, like, how they've had him cut off his own face in the comics. That's what they should be doing. <laughs> First five minutes, they're just like, man, I hate this stupid face. Nah! <laughs> <laughs> Peels it like crescent rolls. <laughs> Ugh. I love crescent rolls. So, I think me and Tony, especially, GameStop has become a... Uh, regular stopping point. Almost regular visitation 
with the parents on occasion. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I was about to say, I've never trying gone. to track. That's one place I wouldn't take my parents. <laughs> but uh, it's almost it's, it's become a place we kind of hit up regularly when it comes to like collectibles and toys and uh-huh. Marvel Legends and stuff like that. And, and apparently they're not doing so good. Uh, they're going to close like 200 stores. Yeah. Uh, coming up. And word is, is they may they may begin to start shifting focus. And uh, instead of going it into like video games, they're going to maybe start going into more uh, tabletop. Yeah, I heard like that. Dungeons and Dragons and Hero Clicks and stuff like that. Hell yeah. Along with having like old school arcade games that people can play. Huh. Um, so, so they're turning them into like hobby shops? Kind of. That's weird. Cool. I think. And so uh, GameStop has lost their minds. Uh, uh, <laughs> has, lo- has been losing sales drastically. Emerging. With like, with like online gaming and people just buying their stuff online. Like, and their shitty practices. Yeah. And that yeah. Also giving it 30 cents for a freaking Xbox. That's also like that might really have been an exaggeration, but still, I don't think you're too far off, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I say that probably did. I agree with you. I, I think it caught up to him, and I think that, that well, I think that, that bad a, blood kind of an oversaturated really market where they were there was literally so many Game Stops. Oh yeah, like we we had two Game Stops in our mall. Yeah, at one point, I wish it was still like that. Wasn't now. it three at one point? I think there was. I think because there were two Game Stops, and then there was that store that they bought out. Yeah, what the what store was it? It was something games. I can't remember what it was. It wasn't called. EB Games, oh, was it? It was EB Games. They bought EB Games. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Because I think there were two GameStops in there and then that. Or maybe there was a GameStop right next to the mall. There's one across from the mall. Yeah. And then there were two GameStops yeah. inside of it. But I remember, um, and this may go Do against you the, remember? The, the contract I signed <laughs> when I worked for GameStop for a month. Uh, maybe two months holiday. No, it was, it was, it was like a month. Let's see him come after us. Uh, it, no, that store's closed. Long closed. Uh, but I remember my one of my orient- or when I was interviewed by the guy there, I still remember his name was Manny. Uh, when oh, I was bastard. <laughs> when I was interviewed, when he, we did the interview, he had mentioned that you know one of GameStop's goals was to be able to see a GameStop from a GameStop, so that if you didn't have it, they didn't have to go far to get what they need. And I remember then thinking, like, well, that don't sound right. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Yeah, at all. that's I weird. Will, I will say, as a customer, that ha- that came into play for me quite a bit. Back, it's in the something day. like in the short scheme, it seems like a good idea. Yeah, but <laughs> once like in the grand scheme, it's like. Maybe not. I mean, back then though, did you really think that like people would be more towards the downloading games than no purchasing? No, I think that. I mean, I think that's definitely. I think done that, them a huge detriment. And not to mention, like, isn't it? Isn't it now with like a lot of games? Like, once you download, buy them, and download them on your Xbox, like that game is yours. Like, you can't use it on any other system. Or is that something I've imagined? I I have no idea. It's not that way for the Switch. If you got a Switch. And you switch switches, then um, that's the last switch. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> if you have a switch and you break the switch, and it's uh, now when you say break the switch, you mean physically break it or jailbreak it? Uh, physically break it. Okay. Then you, if you bought a different switch, as long as it's on that one switch, you have the primary switch that has the account on it. So you okay, so it's, it's it. linked to your account, not to the switch. Uh-huh. Correct. So I wonder if it's the same thing on Xbox. Like if I came over and logged in on my account on Mike's Xbox, we can play my download games or if it's on the drive itself. You know who probably would know this? Cody. Yeah. Probably. The one time we need him on the show and he's gone. <laughs> Maybe he'll comment. Um, Doubtful. So Tell, Make sure to smash that uh, subscribe button too. <laughs> so GameStop, yeah, they're they're not doing so hot. Uh, there's also word that they're going to be laying off like execs and, and, and board members and all kinds of shit. I wonder and if they'll get golden parachutes. <laughs> Figuratively or literally? Well, the golden parachute is where they uh, just give you a ton of money for failing horribly as a CEO. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a, that's, I mean, the figurative manner. They literally gave them that. So yeah, GameStop not doing good, which is kind of a bummer because we've really like, and they've been really kicking up their collector, their collector uh, stuff, like with the NECA exclusives and GameStop exclusives, Marvel Legends, all that stuff, Um, which brings in the next point that there is one area that GameStop saw growth in and that was the collectible area that was all me it was a uh, <laughs> we did help i think it was a 21.20 percent year that's to a, year increase that's a pretty good increase for a year to be yeah. honest well because their loss for the year to year like total was 14 percent wow 14 percent drop but so had that 20 like and i saw somebody post on facebook a toy reviewer he'd said you know i've been saying this for the past couple of years now like gamestop needs basically needs to steer into this like yeah. Oh yeah. Could you imagine if they became like a adult collector store Mecca and like then, but like, and then like I even commented and he mentioned, like I commented, I was like, yeah, man, that would be a great idea. Like I am so for this, like 
sign me up. And he's like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's nice as it would be. Like, I'm sure they've talked about it, but there's logistics to doing it mm-hmm. that might not be beneficial to GameStop in the long run. Like, they'd have to work on contracts with all these companies like Hasbro and this stuff to become a main carrier. So then they might end up having to carry stuff that they don't sell mm. and this and that. And I'm like, oh, I guess there is. Well, I mean, it can't be that severely complicated seeing as how like in the past 10 years, how many like random comic book shops have popped up. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that like in our area, uh, GameStop would definitely be a major competitor for those said stores. Yeah. Like it, it is kind of, a, it is kind of a weird thing to think of like an adult collector friendly store. Yeah. Like you kind of said like a hobby shop mm-hmm. almost like you could definitely lump that stuff in there with that. And like you change the name. Uh, I think the, the reviewer said something like pop stop, like for pop culture, like your pop culture stop or whatever. That's smart. Or like, you know, it's just like a collector. Or they stop could just or, change them all to think geek um, stores. Yeah. Yeah. That would be an easy transition for sure. The thing is though, like I guess though also too, there's also the thing that like as big as adult collecting is now, It'll never be what video games were to GameStop. No, which was very, very lucrative, especially like with that fucking turnaround of like, oh, yeah, here's five games. All right, here's five dollars. And now we're going to sell these games for thirty dollars each. Oh, yeah, that was. And that's what and that's what started to sour people. Yeah. I mean, oh, God. Yeah, that's not even just customers like customers and employees as well. I know so many ex GameStop employees that were like, dude, that do a YouTube search. Oh, I I have. They're all over. (laughs) Uh, just like going on about like their issues. Oh yeah. No, there was a lot of issues. I mean, like I was too young to give a shit back then, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I know a good friend of mine who worked for them for years and years and he still refuses to shop there because of like, he just, he's soured. Like, I mean, it's, I guess it's kind of like certain people we know with another company they're just, <laughs> they're yeah. just super soured about it. Yeah. So like, it's <laughs> to say the playing the devil's advocate, I guess, um, it's a terrible company, but if they steer into adult uh, collectors, like they're well, going to be, they're going to, they're going to boom more than lose. Here's another thing to think about. You know, they kind of them. And I think I want to say target when Toys R Us shut their doors, they kind of tried to pick up that ball a little bit, which is smart, which was very smart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very, very smart. Um, I don't think Toys R Us realized that there was such a market there for that kind of stuff, especially our Toys R Us. Our Toys R Us never had shit. No, I think, well, we, our our area is not to be compared with most areas. Yes, like we, as Brewski said, is apparently the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, of collecting. yeah. <laughs> which is highly annoying to me now. Every time I go out and don't find anything, like that's exactly that war machine was still at Target. Yeah, and the more I look at it, the more I'm just kind of like, nah, it doesn't look yeah. that great. Like I was excited <laughs> when it first came out, but then I, I just keep looking at it. I'm just like, this looks like garbage. Is that the uh, end game yeah. machine? But what's really weird is it's more like the Iron Patriot armor at the end than it is the War Machine armor you yeah. see him wearing throughout the movie. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what stinks me. I'm like, this isn't even like the right War Machine armor. <laughs> uh, the uh, What would suck, too, if GameStop closes is, once again, not just like our toys, but like toys in general, toy companies are going to take another hit. Yeah. And, a and company, Hasbro will pick up the pieces again. And yeah, Hasbro will try to pick up those pieces again. And um, I, I So I'm of two minds. Like, part of me is like, Ah, fuck GameStop. But the other part of me is like, nah, like I, I would want to see them do something. But these companies tend to not adapt in time. Yeah. Or, but when they try to adapt, it's too late. Yeah. You know, Toys R Us, Blockbuster. They're not proactive enough. Yeah. They try to stick in their ways and then it just kind of collapses in on itself. I wonder. OK, so like there's a there's a bearing rule in the stock market that when when a stock tends to crash, people get shell shocked and they tend to sell off Mm -hmm. and the rule is you know stick it through because in the long run it's going to go back up again and i think that's maybe that's kind of like this big old big ceo business aspect of it is okay well we're low now but we'll come back Mm -hmm. and i think maybe that's the whole well thought process behind what they're thinking i think gamestop is another one of those things where like with like toys r us where you always thought it was going to be there you kind of took it for granted you were just kind (laughs) of like yeah yeah it's always going to be there like toys r us is never going to close like what yeah and now we're at a point where it's like I mean, GameStop is almost it is almost like how game how Toys R Us was, where like every few months we're hearing more and more like, oh, they're not doing so good. Oh, they're closing stores. They're closing like they just closed, I think, 180 some stores. Wow. And they're going to close another 200 by year's end. Wow. So I wonder. I don't know. We have to see at least a couple of ours close. Yeah, because I, I can't think of any around here that have closed. Me either. Can you? Well, besides the ones in the mall. Yeah, besides the ones <laughs> yeah. in the mall. But those closed a long time those ago. Closed, those closed when the 
last recession happened, I yeah. want to say. Yeah. Um, no, in fact, yeah, even the one that's in Woodhaven is still around. The one that's in Woodhaven, the one by my house is still around. Actually, the one in Woodhaven, I just spent a lot of money at. The one in Taylor is still around. <laughs> I just spent a lot of money at that Taylor one with that <laughs> fucking <laughs> bag deal. So did I. Um, where's, the other, where's our other game stops? Uh, it's Taylor. There's one in Lincoln Park. There's one in Lincoln Park? Yeah, it's over there on Southfield and Southfield and Dix or Southfield and Fort. It's easy to miss. Like it's kind of right there on the corner. It's in a strip mall, and uh, like I didn't even I I thought it was somewhere else. I thought the only one I knew of in Lincoln Park was one of the old Sears Plaza. Yeah, okay, which so is the one I worked at. There's the Sears Plaza, and then Kitty Corner is where the okay GameStop is. That one actually has a pretty solid selection. There's also the one in Allen Park on the hill. Yep. If bottom, anybody's listening that hill. doesn't live in Michigan, they're like yeah, they're like I don't give deal. a crap about any of these. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. What do, what do you guys think? Do you, do you guys all want GameStop to come back and maybe do adult toys and other... That sounds bad. Adult toys. <laughs> adult collectibles. Well, now you put it that way. Janet's closet. <laughs> Turn into the you know hobby shop, tabletop, Dungeons and Dragons, Hero Clicks stuff. That sounds cool as hell. I'd love to have a franchise of shops like that around here. It would be really cool, especially for the tabletop aspect of it. Like, it would smell terrible, but... Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, you ever they, been to a comic shop on the fucking Magic the Gathering night? Ooh, yeah. Or yeah. a Smash Brothers tournament? Yeah. I've never been to you. We went to a comic book shop. I won't say the name, but it was a tournament of some sort. There's only one. You that I know of. <laughs> and we, we were, me and Steph went in there. And it was like a Friday night. It was like right around after Christmas or something like that or around Christmas break. And we were just like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> smells like open ass in here. Funny it's, story. And I, I, know so which, I, I, know, I know which one you're talking about. And uh, they hold them somewhere else now. Yeah, they, uh, they have them in another and building. <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard rumors that. Just have it outside, man. There was customer complaints. And that's why they had them at the other building now. Listen, the fucking magic kid smell. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like it smell was, very magical in here. I can tell you that much. <laughs> oh, Batman Last Night on Earth, book two. Boy, what a book that is. Boy, if you thought the first one was a wild ride, then. <laughs> Holy, Holy shit. shit. Hold on tight, buddy, because it only gets loopier after that. <laughs> it does. Um I'm trying to remember how it starts. Well, there's a Batman. It there's starts a with Batman. a man. It, start, it, it starts, starts with, with a surreal the... where you can't tell if it's a dream or not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's he, right. Joe spoilers, Chills by the way. Yeah. I was reading that. I was just like, wow. Well, I better I just keep confused. reading. I, I was like, they're probably going to explain what the fuck's going on. <laughs> they don't. Na- no, well, they, well it was really. a dream. It, it was a dream. Yeah. yeah. It, it's well, it's was not it even, a dream or was it a memory? Well, it was probably a, me- a it was dream a blending. memory. Yeah, it was a blending of both. Because he's, he's a clone. Uh, spoilers. But yeah. Um, and yeah, I was reading. I was like, did I miss something? Am I actually reading issue three right now? <laughs> well, then he's he's still carrying around the Joker head and the lantern. Yeah. Which is still talking to him. And I still don't know. Do other people hear it? No one said so. anything. Because Has anyone responded to the Joker? Uh, ooh, I don't think so. No. I don't know. I thought maybe well, later in this issue, he's he's with somebody else. I don't want to give anything away so early, but he's with somebody else. And I thought that they responded to something that the Joker oh, said. Oh, they did. They did? They did. Okay. But okay. they were in, weren't they in the oh, in they limbo. Were in, we're in oh, limbo. spirit world, yeah. asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We're in the spirit world, <laughs> asshole. They can't see you. <laughs> Anybody know what that's from? Oh, fuck. Anybody? I thought it was from Venture Brothers. No. What was it from? It's from an a 80s movie. Bueller? No, that's not Ferris Bueller. I was going to say, what? <laughs> and, uh, damn it, what was that reference from? Of Amelia Westevez, Charlie Sheen, and uh, Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Dan Young Guns. Young oh, Guns. Oh, that's oh. right. So I haven't seen Young Guns in they, years. Uh, did Peyote. Yeah. And they're riding through. The, yeah. The, the, he's I think, on the horse backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time I seen Young Guns, you were still over uh, at the Orange House. It's a fucking great movie. It is. That was the last Both time. Both of them were great. It. Yeah. It doesn't get, what a blend, you know, 80s and Western and anyways, <laughs> we got off our uh, topic there. Speaking of which, Young Guns and Young Guns 2, I think are free to watch on either Amazon or Voodoo right Fuck now. yeah. So. Anybody listening that wants to watch it, there you go. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, so it ends up uh, Batman's on his weird quest with his severed Joker head in the lantern. <laughs> and he ends up falling into like some kind of weird uh, like 
almost like a fortress of solitude like area which is kind of convenient they called it the plains of solitude the right? plains of solitude which is a cool name well, he doesn't fall into it he's like do they climb into it i'm gonna be honest they i really it. sped through this <laughs> <laughs> well he, he doesn't fall into it you, you see some crazy uh crazy visuals yeah their, i love the their travel the art is like, fantastic they go to like some sort of like a like they're flying they're flying on a backlighter out of nowhere yeah <laughs> like i don't know where i even got this backlighter um you know and they fly they, they, they fly <laughs> over like what seems to be some sort of army um it was station. the unknown soldiers right yes and yes. uh oh fort waller right yes fort waller that's which exactly is a cool right. idea and it was apparently powered by uh what's his name uh adam um yeah captain adam captain adam and so like they're flying over this and they see a bunch of people fucking dying and Batman pretty much is like, oh, we can't save him. Yeah. Like he wants to save him, but he knows it's not possible. Like, oh, that looks a little, looks a little rough down there. And then there's this, <laughs> I, what did you oh, think yeah, about this, it, uh, this frame of the giant swamp, swamp thing? thing? Yeah, man. Did you like it? I loved it. I figured you'd get a kick out yeah. of it. Uh, I love all the art in this. And I, I, you know, I, it's weird. I kind of, I think, cause I'm, I'm going through the, the, the book now I'm looking, I, for some reason I like really glossed over that whole like war between like. Well, it didn't. It, it and, was. It didn't play into the plot at all. And compared no, to everything no. else that yeah. happened in the book, it was kind of like a. Like, it was a filler. It, they were just like, "Oh shit, look at that." Well, anyways, it's it, it's it's basically what I like to call the comic book montage. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's just a montage of a bunch of shit they see on the way, and then that segues into uh, Alfred in Gotham, which looks like he's powering down Wayne Enterprises Tower. Yeah, it's like, it's like a like foggy a London town. Yeah. 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 And that's that's actually one of my favorite renditions of Gotham is when they make it look like foggy London. Hmm. Um. But he Which, runs in. He runs into some char- yeah. characters. Yes. Scare. Uh, scare Scary Bane? types. Scare man. Yes. Scare Bane. Look like a Scare Bane. Bane <laughs> Looking like Master Blaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who run Barker Town? <laughs> and they uh, all like hunched over Bane because he has no legs. Bane looks like really super fucking, roided. Yeah. He looks all. Gr- well, it seems out. to be like the the go to thing whenever you do a future version of Brain. He fucking OD'd on the yeah. venom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He yeah. hasn't talked. Has he spoken? No word. Because yeah. they said they got rid of basically whatever didn't, what they didn't their need. Their weaknesses. Yeah. weaknesses. Like legs. Like legs. I didn't understand that. Like, <laughs> okay. Don't need I'm legs. Guess, yeah. Basically, he just needs to be. his brain on Bane's brawn. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Fast. Okay. I guess that, that would make sense. Say it three times fast. Scarecrow's brain on Bane's brawn. Scarecrow's brain on Bane's brawn. Scarecrow's brain on Bane's brawn. Damn it. Did I get, yeah, did I get I think you I got did, it. You did. Fuck yeah. It was a struggle. <laughs> was a struggle for you. The hard part was on the left side of my face stopped working halfway through. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, they're working for Omega, who shows up. Yep. And they, they and he looks cool. I, I like his, his look. It's pretty uh, intimidating. Do we, do we wait till after we've covered the whole book for us all to speculate on who this is? Yeah, yeah. I think we, okay. should, we should wait till the end. He looks fucking beefy as fuck too. He looks yeah. like a really cool. He looks like a blend of uh, Batman and Darkseid. I thought he looks like a Black Panther. I could see that too. I thought, but it's not Black Panther because that's that, that did come. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> could you repeat that, please, Fire Marshal Bill? <laughs> Let me check out that. <sighs> but, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, he's beefy. He kills Alfred. He does in Alfred. a very loving and uh, Who would respectful think Alfred way. Would die like yeah. two times in a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so apparently somebody over at dc has some major grudges with the alpha character how many times we could kill this old bastard he's a cocky cogni <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if he even like okay so they kill alfred uh-huh omega shows up says hey what's up you played right in my plan good job <laughs> die now <laughs> he said all those things <laughs> uh and then that's when it cuts to what looks like a uh um you know bat or superman's little uh frosty getaway I can't remember what it's called now. Ports Ports of solitude. solitude. The Plains of Solitude. Yeah, that's, yeah it's called the Plains of Solitude here. And shit ends up going down. He ends up falling and he yeah. gets saved by a beautiful bearded beast. Super, yeah. He almost gets hit by a rocket, too. A, yeah. bunch, of, a bunch of rockets full of uh, dead, dead Superman, Superman babies. <laughs> you don't know that till later. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. It's a bunch of dead fetuses falling this show from the sky. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this comic is so weird. Yeah. They take all the ideas and just mix them together. And I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a really good read. I definitely, could, though, I could see how purists would hate these comics. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was kind of like, like, I didn't really like uh, Old Man Logan because it was a reimagining. And I, did, I was just like, why, you know, why is uh, Bruce Banner a hick in this? And like, Old Man Logan was, for me, was almost too bleak. Almost? 
okay it was very very bleak like this is bleak but it's also cool and like imaginative and bizarre yeah, and yeah. Like, everything makes you go holy shit old man logan was essentially just a revenge story yeah yeah it was a western there's a lot more to this um and i i, I don't mean to jump ahead but i got really bummed when i found out the bearded superman that he's you know it was like, a robot it, it was a superman robot yeah it's not real and i was like robot oh. clone right yeah yeah it's an it's an homage to the superman robots that they had in Silver Age, and then brought back during the 90s, yeah. I believe. And uh, so they end up going through the the plains of solitude, yeah. and they end up back at the Kent farm. Yep. Where you find out that Lex Luthor's there. And he's, and he's crazy and cracked out. Yeah, saying, he's yeah. all crazy, and like, I thought maybe I was like, are you going to find out he had like cancer or something? That's what I thought they were going He's just with. old. He's just old and fucking crazy. And he explained how he uh, outsmarted Superman. That Okay, yeah, that was really crazy. Yeah, it, was, it made sense. Yeah, yeah, it did. Should we try to explain it? Okay, so basically, <laughs> so basically, Lex, before all this shit goes sideways and Doomsday comes upon us, not the character, the actual Event. sense of the yeah, <laughs> sense of the word, Lex challenges um, Superman to a d- debate as to which is better, uh, good or evil. <laughs> and <laughs> Superman is, that sounds so weird. Superman is 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 on pressure because apparently Lex has broadcasted this across and the world. And there's kryptonite under the ground. And there's yeah, there's fucking. Guy's a madman. <laughs> yeah. Like I would have never thought to like it, play it only got more bizarre. Well, so Superman or Superman was challenged to a debate with the stakes being the loser dies and Superman had did not want to do it. He got coerced into doing it. Well, and he didn't and you know, uh and Lex said if he did it, you know, that was it. He would no longer try to fight yeah. him. He would he would disband the the Legion of Doom Legion yep. of Doom and all that stuff. And apparently Starro had uh Linked himself to the minds of everyone on the planet yeah. to be used as a voting device. I uh, I would say that Starro is probably right now, currently for me, one of the most left field uh, used like references in this comic. Like yeah. I just like Starro. Like yeah. I haven't heard that name in I don't even know how long. Like Batman a long time. has a Starro sidekick in one of the comics right now. Are you serious? Uh huh. Yeah. It's a young Starro. What the hell? Yeah. It's uh, the best Robin. What's going ever? on over yeah. there, DC? <laughs> I think it's Young Justice or something. Yeah, they're, they're just throwing shit against the wall and seeing what sticks in this <laughs> He's supposed to be great. He calls Batman dad, too, so... It's like a hatched infant Starro. That's so fucking weird. <laughs> I always like Starro. He's a, he's a weird guy. Um, but anyway, so Superman gave an amazing speech. A super speech, if you will. That even convinced Lex. Yeah. Yep, Lex was convinced. And then Lex's speech wasn't as good. It was half-hearted. Yep. <laughs> he tried mixing in pieces from famous speeches to affect the emotional center of your brain. It just didn't work. Everyone likes Superman's better because he is good. But they didn't. They didn't? Yeah, because at the end, um, Superman is then impaled by kryptonite spikes that come up. I thought Superman pushed uh, Lex out of the way of the is spike. Is that what? Yeah. Because, because of the villains. Oh, like, I guess so. Yeah. The moment he would save me from the shards with his super speed. So I guess, yeah, I guess he does save Lex at the end. One last time. They just didn't, they didn't panel it. It's all so, a talking bubble. Mm-hmm. After that, Lex basically has devoted his life to trying to bring I, back a Superman. Ironically, he spent his entire life trying to kill Superman unsuccessfully. And now he's spent the rest of his life unsuccessfully trying to bring back Superman. <laughs> he's just a giant failure. Yeah. Giant, just know smarty, what billionaire failure. Um, So that gets kind of crazy. Yep. And things get even crazier when... You know, the bearded Superman shows up to attack them. Yep. And it's Scarecrow and Bane. Bane Crow. <laughs> Bane Crow. Bane Crow has it's tracked him down and they've affected the Superman, not just Superman, but all the Superman's yep. minds. With uh, injections from their his really long, gross looking fingers. <gasps> okay, so question here. So last issue we're talking about, like, how did they pull off this whole, like, everybody going crazy and invading the Hall of Justice and killing everybody? Do you think that was Scarecrow's, I guess, now mind? Could have been. It could also have to do with Starro. It's a lot of injections. Too. I would think it'd be Starro after the whole speech and all that. Oh, okay, maybe that too. But I don't think they'll ever conclusively say what yeah. happened. But they might. That's poor storytelling. <laughs> no, it's it leaves it to the imagination. It's but fiction storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Uh, so, but Wonder Woman ends up showing up yep. and just fucking slicing the shit. Out of yeah, yeah. Superman clone. You can see his, uh, you can see his totally, intestines. Totally goes uh, Gordon Ramsay on him. <laughs> Chops his head clean off. Yep. I think he's, she slices an arm off. She slices yeah. yeah. She stabs him to the chest. He gets back up and starts attacking again, so she cuts off his head. Yeah. He took it. Yeah, she sh- stabbed I, him in the chest through the back, then cut off his arm, then cut off his head. I don't know if I uh, said this, but I really like the character design of Wonder Woman in this. Yeah, it looks really cool. It's nuts. It's She's got nuts. a mohawk. Yep. And a cool scar on her face. She does. 
Well, this can't be the future if you don't have a scar on your face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a cyborg arm and a huge gun. Yeah. Uh, some pouches. So uh, Lex basically no ends feet. up sacrificing himself. Yeah. So uh, Wonder Woman and Batman can escape through a, a black hole. Or was it a black hole like portal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he had yeah. a black hole machine that he used like five different fucking methods of DC trying. super science tropes in there. <laughs> he did. All, he really he did. He had Brainiac's crown. He did. He used a black hole generator and he's that's right he used the crown to control basically get uh, them out of there yeah the crown was able to pull super rot man rockets from different universes but all of them had dead babies inside of them <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's definitely one of those things that you would hear on like a crazy fan fiction site yeah uh so then they end up going to like a this different land area and it basically is a, it turns out to be the specter <laughs> yeah it was his uh, cape which by the way specter can die Yep. <laughs> Going back to March Madness again. <laughs> Taking it back. This one isn't canon, though. This is an else world. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> it fits my argument, damn it. <laughs> uh, and they end, up go- they end up going into the spirit world. Yep. <laughs> Asshole. Through-, <laughs> <laughs> Through the hood of the Spectre? Oh, no, we didn't even did. mention the uh, Speed Force storms either. Oh, oh, yeah, where it was all those flashes. Tony must have been traumatized by that. I was. I was like, no, all the flashes? <laughs> yeah. It's comprised of all the flashes in some sort of horrible, like what? morphing flux. They're like a bendy milkshake tornado. <laughs> That's something I, I wish they would kind of elaborate on. Like, how did that happen? They ran too fast. I was about to say, maybe somebody <laughs> strapped a bomb to their ankle that they couldn't slow down and they had to go in circles. Hasn't that actually happened? Yeah. yeah it was. It, it's uh, It's in Doom. Uh, the game? No, the, <laughs> the DC animated movie. Oh, that's right. Uh, what was I going to say? So they go into the spirit world via the Spectre's hood on the ground. Yeah. Which this hood is oversized. <laughs> it's not it's like a few sizes. Normal. It's at least yeah. a three X. They, not- they, I just imagine Batman and Wonder just Listen, I, 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 I wear a three X. Like this, this is way bigger than a three X asshole. <laughs> it might be a four X. <laughs> it, cover, it covers like a fucking miles, fourteen yeah. acres. <laughs> <laughs> they mistake it for the ground. So yeah, they uh, and Wonder Woman basically is telling him not to look. Don't look because you're going to see like. All the dead people. All that, the dead people that you're responsible for. Yeah, which that's fucked up. That's yep. really fucked up. I really, I really like that part because of how fucked up it was. And like Wonder Woman sees like basically the entire Justice League. Yeah, no, that's what Batman. No, that's sees. what Batman says. Oh, that's what Batman sees. Yeah. Okay. Wonder Woman says she sees. Oh, yeah, like, the Amazons. The Amazons. Yeah. We don't know who the Joker saw. I'm sure he's seen a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me he was probably overrun. By Another it. thing that was bizarre and interesting about the story is that uh, a lot of the plot exposition was done uh, by the Joker. Yeah. Yeah, the he was the narrator, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Batman does end up seeing Alfred, mm-hmm. which that really fucking sucks. Like, oh, off. snap. Not you, Alfred. <laughs> he wants to get off the boat and go, but you, if you go off the boat, you're basically your dad. Yeah, yeah, they don't let you back in because you're all soggy. The water's lava. <laughs> the water's lava. <laughs> and they end up going to Gotham or Omega City or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, what, which, like, did they pretty much pass through the spirit world to get to Omega City? That's like, what it seems as, like. As like yeah. a fast travel pass? Like, I, it seemed like it, yeah. A, fa- a fast pass to Omega <laughs> City? <laughs> it looks really cool. It has like the big uh, Omega signal. The Omega it signal. And, and apparently yeah. it has the anti-life. Oh, they, didn't they call it the anti-life signal or something yeah, like that? So the it's anti-life like, signal. Which is super cool because, again, it's a blending of uh, Dark Side and Batman yeah. mythos and lore. Um, And they end up coming across the Court of Owls, yeah. which I didn't fucking Ooh. see coming. Who's there? Who, who's there? Who's there? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't catch that the first time through. I was just like, is this I? a good way? Oh, oh, guys, they're going to make, make an owl pun. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Go. Who? <laughs> um, oh, and yeah. you find out that they are being led by... None other than my favorite Robin. <laughs> Dick Grayson. Yeah. <laughs> Which he, is kind he of mind blowing. very gracefully. Yeah, well, he, well, he's Dick. a grace and gray. Yeah. Gray. Yeah. Um, and that's the, that's the last, <laughs> and then dun, 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 I was like, this is the big cliffhanger you leave off that. Like all the crazy shit. You're th- I mean, don't get me wrong. It was cool. And it was an interesting twist, but like after all the crazy shit, I was like, this is where they stop. I'm kind of bummed that there's really only one book left. Yeah, me too. They have a lot to wrap up in the last book. Too. I hope it's like a really thicken. Maybe that's why it's, uh, has it come out yet? Could be. Um, so we, we, we mentioned it earlier, speculation on who Omega is. Yeah, last time we talked about the first issue, we all thought it was Superman. Yeah. yeah. And Batman even says when they're in the spirit world that he feels like it's somebody that he's very close to, that he's... He speculated it might have been another failed, another clone of Batman. Yeah, which tells me that it's not, not going yeah. to be. Um, so do you think it's Damien? I, I was about to say, I think it's one of the Robins left. Not I, At first, I thought it was Grayson, and then the ending came, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, thank God. The most <laughs> logical choice would be 
I think either Damien or Tim Drake. You don't think Jason Todd? Nah, Jason's too unstable to pull off anything <laughs> too big. Or could it be um, he had that clone in Court of Owls that was the lead. Uh, Thomas owl. Wayne Jr. Was that the? I think so. I think that was his name. Thomas Wayne Jr. Yeah. That's possibly. They, didn't they drop him like a big hot, a hot box of rocks? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, just, he was in that uh, story arc and I don't think he's ever been back. Yeah. Or maybe they'll go really super left field. Maybe it'll be somebody like Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, that Omega, like when they showed him, he's like super he's fucking beefy. Yeah. yeah. He's a big and he's a big boy big boy season so i mean i mean if if you span your horizon a little bit it doesn't take really anything out of the mix like he could he could have synthesized some of bane's venom oh, and yeah. stabilized yeah. it and i i, I honestly a bunch of crazy shit it could be anyone i don't think it's gonna be anybody we said i really don't damien i mean like all the ones I, these all seem too obvious it does like, except it, for uh it has, be, it has to be somebody that had a good repertoire with um alfred because it, yeah the way alfred went out in this this issue uh, it definitely felt like there was some sympathy towards it. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't just a cold. The last thing he saw was him saving the way, right? Stopping them to go to the movies, right? So, like, I, I feel like it's somebody actually close. I if know. not, maybe another clone, maybe that girl. <laughs> it could Ooh, be. Babs. It could just be like a suit, like a you know a robot. Suit. Oh yeah, maybe like a mech suit. Yeah, maybe it's not a clone. Maybe it's the original Batman. Oh shit! Oh, I didn't fuck, even think about that. Yeah. That has a high. That's a high probability. That that is a pretty. St- I think if that's the most. Maybe it's a. Maybe it's uh, the original Batman with the anti-life equation. Yeah. Oh, maybe. And that's why Ooh. he's all dark side out. That's possible. I, I, I like that. I, I hope that that's the case. Uh, yeah. So you can say, ha ha ha, I was right. Yeah. <laughs> and we all know I love to do that. <laughs> I think you're right. I'm going to go ahead and hop on your uh I would say it's a bandwagon. It's, yeah. a, it's a pretty good theory and pretty solid at it that. It seems like, yeah, I think it fits really well. I and would if say it's not, I, I am going to be disappointed. Call you That's an idiot. Problem. Say you're stupid. <laughs> That's the problem with like trying to theorize and predict stuff like this is a lot of times the stuff you come up with is actually better than what ended yeah. up happening. Like <laughs> it's going to turn out that it was like uh, the calendar Lois man Lane. or something. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's what happened. Strange. It that's was, what happened with the last Jedi. I mean, a lot of it was just disappointment yeah. from fan speculation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if there wasn't the rampant speculation, maybe the disappointment wouldn't have, well, it would have been there a little bit still, but <laughs> maybe not quite as if like fans hadn't done a better job of writing the movie for them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it was another really solid read. Like I said, I'm, I'm really bummed to see that it's going to come to an end already. I'd like uh, to see this be an issues. ongoing man. Like I know, right? Yeah, hold on, hold on. So I disagree completely. Uh, I want it to end just because it's that, that good. Maybe, maybe like, yeah. It's it's a whole it's a whole other uh, um, make it like make it a twelve issue. Yeah. I, well, he said it was going to be three. I thought at least six. Yeah, six would be good. Twelve would be like primo. I don't know. I'm just so much crazy shit. Maybe they'll bring another one. Like maybe yeah. If it's popular. If it, I mean, I feel like it's selling out. Yeah. yeah. Like it's hard to find. It's a very cool concept. Um, and it, it kind of makes me want to read even more of the DC Black Label stuff, like Batman Damned, um, the Joker book they did. Uh, there's also a Harley book that they're doing with the DC Black Label. Oh boy! <laughs> that I, I I I heard is that the one where Harley is Batman's sidekick though? No, no, no. Okay. Um, but if they're gonna keep doing these DC Black Labels, maybe try to explore some other characters in DC. Yeah, because really so like far it seems like they've only done Batman and Batman characters. I re- well, I mean, I guess that would be the easiest. It is. I feel accessible. like that's like yeah. I feel like that is also one of the ones you can take more adult easier hey man make a question one that'd be great that would make be a grim and gritty you could probably Constantine. do i was gonna say you could do any great. of those yeah, like low Hellblazer. level black magic kind of uh characters i would love to see Dead a green man. lantern one yeah maybe exploring different characters out of the green lantern corpse not so much like the main what is it now five human green yeah, lanterns no shit uh plastic man would be fit really well in uh oh yeah <laughs> hell yeah oh, yeah, oh, yeah he'd fit in real well <laughs> you know and like because he's plastic i i love <laughs> i think another reason i really like the the book so far is it's it's kind of like uh it's kind of like a hybrid it's a hybrid of graphic novels and a monthly run yeah it's, yeah. it's best a, of both worlds yeah oh, best well. of both worlds and you don't get all the ads and stuff in the book which is just <sighs> you don't realize how horrible they are until you try reading it it's like, true like i've tried reading single issues and it's literally like every three pages isn't it i yeah. stand by the fact that like if the ads in books nowadays were like as good as the ads in books in the 90s like if I, <laughs> nobody yeah nobody would, Game Boy ad, yeah. 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 Nobody would be mad about x-ray it. specs yeah 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 <laughs> oh fuck yeah <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> i can see through that girl's clothes <laughs> look out 
I'm a sexual predator. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I liked it. Me too. Did you like it, it as much as the first one or more the same? Honestly, I would have to say I probably liked it more. Yeah. I really? loved Omega. Like the first one wowed me a lot. I was like, there's no way they're going to be able to keep wowing me. And they did. They <laughs> definitely kept wowing me. I was like, well, you know, I literally saying, wow, you know, like I would be, you know, just like staring at the splash pages and I love the art. I love the storytelling. I love the characters. I think it's fantastic. And, uh, I can't wait to see how they're going to wrap this up. I, uh, I personally, to put this in a movie aspect, I always liked the first and third acts and not big on the second act. What about the, uh, Empire? What? Oh, in a trilogy sense, like that's completely different. Okay. I mean, as I see. Oh, movie. And then, okay. Yeah. Um, so like this one, although I did enjoy it, like it's full of exposition and explaining a lot of stuff. There's not like a whole lot of action. Mm-hmm. So like a lot of traveling, a lot of traveling, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of talking. Um, so I like the first one better than this one, which is, a, it's actually more of a bummer because the cover is Bane and Scarecrow. So I got like super jacked that these two were going to be in it and they were mm-hmm. in it for like a fraction of a, of the comic. And I was like, bah, <laughs> damn it. A couple pages, but I did, I did enjoy it. So like, I'm not saying it was bad at all. It was just, that's my own personal preference. Like second acts are always kind of one of those things. I'm like, all right, let's, let's just make it through this. <laughs> yeah. It definitely felt like the whole book was setting up for something. Well, yeah. Setting up for book three. Um, so, I think yeah. I, I think I only liked the first one just a smidge better. Like, yeah. and I think the only reason I liked the first one a bit better was just because of that first initial shock of reading everything. Right. And right. you're like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Trying to wrap your head over yeah. everything. And I think I was also kind of hoping for some kind of answers in this book. I mean, we did see how Superman went out, mm-hmm. which I thought was really weird. And I just, I just, <laughs> I just kind of stared at that picture of him with all the mm-hmm. crimson and him just hanging there. It's like very Jesus like. Yeah, it was just like, well, shit. <laughs> That, the only thing I remember seeing worse than that was fucking old man Logan. Yeah. Wolverine killing Jubilee. Yeah. That was just depressing. It that was. Whole, that whole panel was just so screwed up. I was just I like, loved it. this is like <laughs> fucking, oh, I was like some ultimatum bullshit. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I know. It just seemed like snuff porn at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I enjoyed that, that whole scenario where he was all mind warped and he ended up killing all of his friends. I thought it was fucked up. It was. It was. Yeah. I mean, that's the point of it, though. Like, how do you make one of the, I guess, would be like the most war oriented brain of the X-Men go completely bonkers to where he just gives up because he's always a fighter. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know. It's just they took the story in such weird directions, too. I didn't like when he was eaten and came out of Hulk's stomach. <laughs> yeah, that was weirder yeah. than the speaking of weird porn. Yeah. Oh, well, oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to have a story. <laughs> I was like, what is weird porn? Well, I was on my way here and Throbcast. <laughs> Throbcast lives. <laughs> uh, do we do we rate it? No, I want to rate it as a full thing. Mm-hmm. Did we rate the last one? I don't remember. If so, either it way, matter. we're going back on our on our word. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember if we rated it. I just I'm, all I know is I enjoyed it. I'm ready for the third one. I kind of wish the third one was already out. I figured it would be. I yeah. told you guys I, I thought that it would probably be out already. I wonder if it has a release date. I couldn't find one. Oh, so you already looked. Yeah, I just um, googled release date and nothing came up for it. Did you see that uh, Doomsday Clock is slated for I think November? Yeah, or December? we brought it up and then yeah, it's so weird. Like we've been doing that a lot. I think we really have our finger on that hot throbbing pulse, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Greg Capullo is still drawing it. Oh, don't okay. hurry up. That was as of Pulling August. Jim Lee, huh? That was as, of, <laughs> as <laughs> that was as of August eighth. Apparently, it's going to be more pages than that than they thought. Oh, good. Awesome. Hey, man, yeah. don't rush perfection. Yeah, I was about to say, like, doing what we're doing right now, reading them digitally, I fly through them. Me too. I, I read I it in like 15 know. minutes. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know why. It, it just fly by. It doesn't make any sense to me. Slide, slide. I guess so. Like, there's less work in, like, More turning twerk. a page. <laughs> Twerking is work. <laughs> just ask all the local bar ladies. <laughs> well, guys, it's been real. I'm glad to have our whole little merry band back together. Yeah. If it was Feels for good. a single solitary moment. <laughs> say, just a blink of an eye. Because you will be back in. The Florida. Watch out for them hurricanes. I'm excited, actually. They come up, you say no. <laughs> I, you go back. Somebody's I mean, like, like, somebody's like, oh, you're going down to Florida right now? I was like, yeah. I was like, I'll leave uh, next week. And they're like, well, what about the hurricanes? And I was like, oh, I got a whole plan. They're like, what? And I go, well, if I see one coming, I'm just going to come up, punch it in the face and go, fuck you. And then walk back. <laughs> Take that hurricane. <laughs> You'll fit right in in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> With the stupidity. Hurricane and trying to take my guns. <laughs> Florida man, Tony. Goddamn liberal hurricane. <laughs> Libtard hurricanes. Liberal cook. <laughs> hurricane. <laughs> Gotta add the hurricane. Oh, yeah, hurricane. <laughs> Cut the promos, Mike.
Be sure to check us out every week on the Pod Bros Podcast and every week you find our show and tons of other great shows. You can also find us on Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, and somewhat iHeartRadio. <laughs> I like how that's become a continuous yeah, joke yeah. now. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We have a Twitter account as well. And also check out our YouTube channel where you can find our great content that we put out weekly, such as toy hunts, reviews, and unboxings. And also our show is on there. So you can spend hours in the dark <laughs> watching alone. us. Watching us alone. We could, you know what? We could be the white noise that puts you to sleep. It's true. Because you ever put on like a YouTube thing and you're just like, I'm just going to watch this and lay here. And then you slowly start to doze off. Oh, are we going to become an ASMR? Yeah. Let's do it. I'm down. I have a pretty soothing voice. You do. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> oh, creepy. <laughs> you said ASMR. ASMR. Jeff being disgusted at other ASMRs for 15 <laughs> hours. <laughs> Super oh, good. I don't like that. <laughs> oh. Ew. <laughs> you can also head on over to our Patreon account and make a kind donation to help keep our bills at bay, if you will. <laughs> Thank you to Charlie Robbins, Jeremy Brown, Angel Jody, Janelle Kozlowski, Chrissy Vance for your continued support and dedication to us as we are dedicated to you. <laughs> I like that. All right. <laughs> really? Just had a stroke. <laughs> uh, we also have t-shirts available over on tpublic.com where you can get some fantastic t-shirts to bathe your body in. <laughs> Anoint your body in a, our amazing t-shirts. <laughs> Don't be a beast. <laughs> Wear a shirt. Hell yeah. Well, I, I do like that. I have I have a I have a rule, Mike, that you have to go um, 10 plus episodes before it becomes a shirt. So you have to keep saying oh. that tagline. <laughs> what are we at? Five? I don't know. <laughs> uh, We're at 27. And if you also want to help out, you can go ahead and click those affiliate links down below. <laughs> There's Twink, Amazon. You just said Twink. I, did not. <laughs> <laughs> I said Twink. There's the Twink. Twink. <laughs> it just sounds like you have a weird accent. And you're saying Twink now. <laughs> twink. <laughs> oh, we <yeah. laughs> Let me wet my whistle. <laughs> we also have Amazon and Entertainment Earth affiliate links that you can also click. Holidays are vastly approaching. You need to get a gift for someone. I'm sure someone loves you enough. <laughs> I'm sure you love someone enough. Whatever. Yeah. Love is involved. Love's in the air. <laughs> can you feel the love? Tonight. It's love that makes kings and vagabonds. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that song originally was supposed to be entirely sung by Nathan Lane? I did not know that. Yeah, Elton John's heard it. He's like, fuck that. That's not happening. <laughs> Nathan Lane. That's horrible. It is where they are. <laughs> God help us all. <laughs> oh, I think that covers all the... I think so. All the goods. I wonder if I'm going to write it down and I could just read it. You say that every day. I do. <laughs> and then I go to do it. I'm like, ugh. I mean, we could just have a cut of you saying it all and put it at the end of it. Yeah, but then you don't get the weird uh, interjections. That's true. That's what people live for. <laughs> that is the most popular part of each episode. <laughs> it's All right, they're at the plugs. <laughs> See what kind of bullshit they say now. <laughs> oh, wow, they said something really stupid that time. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Took them an extra 10 minutes longer than they needed to finish the plug. All right. <laughs> oh, I've been, I'm so happy to have this group back. <laughs> Hell yeah. You all. Uh, until next time, I'm Mike. I am. Wait, did I mess it up? I don't know. Which way did we do it before? <laughs> Wait, no, you were second. <laughs> I'm Tony. And I'm Jeff. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>